Hello guys, today I will show you how to obtain the tensile stresses of the walls in ETAP software and how to compare them to the modulus of rupture. Of course we need to do this because we need to decide whether we need to use the crack or the uncrack section for the walls. For the uncrack sections they have the 0.7 IG as the flexural stiffness, while for the cracked section they have the stiffness of 0.35 IG. If I go to the ACI code 318.14 we can check here this table. We have used almost all of those values in this table for the columns we have used the 0.7 for the walls we have considered them to be uncracked for now and we need to check if we want to use the crack section and for beams we have used the 0.35 ig and for the out of plane bending of the slabs we have used the 0.25 ig okay and reading this paragraph that can clarify more if the factored moments and shears from an analysis based on the moment of inertia of a wall taken equal to 0.7 IG indicate that the wall will crack in a flexure based on the modulus of rupture, the analysis should be repeated with I equal to 0.35 IG in those stories where cracking is predicted using the factored loads, okay? Therefore, we need to obtain the tensile stresses of the walls and we need to compare them to the modulus of rupture. And if the tensile stresses of the wall exceed the modulus of rupture, then the wall should be considered as a crack section, okay? And going to this page 318, let's check the equation of the modulus of rupture. This is the modulus of rupture equation that we need to use, okay? And this is all what we need to know for now from the ACI code. And before going to the ETAP software to obtain the tensile stresses of walls, I would like to show you this example that explains more the meaning of the tensile stresses and how ETAPs even calculate those stresses based on the load combinations, okay? As shown here, I have created this wall with those dimensions of 3 by 3 by 0 0.3 meters. Here I'm displaying the unique names of the shell elements, while here I'm displaying the unique names of the joints. Also, I have used those loads in ETAP software. Going to ETAPs, for example, to this model, I have defined the function of response spectrum analysis here, and I have defined the load case that correspond to that spectrum, as shown here. Also, I have used the self-weight of the material and the superimposed dead load load patterns. For example, for the superimposed dead load, I have assigned them as a point load with a value of 1 kN, okay? And now I'm interested in displaying the shell stresses and of course if we want to display the stresses we need here to select the shell stresses option. And if we are interested in the tensile stresses we need to select the S22. And for those who are not familiar with this term please go and watch my previously uploaded video about the stiffness modifiers because we can understand the meaning of these terms through the same explanation previously presented in this video regarding the stiffness modifiers, okay? For example, S22 is uh, the stress applied on the face number 2 in the direction of local axis number 2. Of course, face number 2 is the face perpendicular to local axis number 2. And all of you should know that the local axis number 2 for the shear walls is aligned in the upward direction. Therefore, we are obtaining the stresses applied in the direction of local axis number 2 at this horizontal section. Therefore, the S22 represents the axial stresses. The one thing that also I want to mention for you regarding the case and the combo. For the that case, we don't have the option of maximum minimum here. While if I click here the load combo, I have this option to select the maximum or minimum. Therefore, this is my aim in providing this example to show you exactly the meaning of those maximum and minimum shown here, okay? And now what I have did in this example that I want to show you, I have displayed the shell stresses of each of the load cases defined here in ETAP software. I have used those three load cases, then I displayed also the shell stresses of this load combination. And going to the Excel sheet, as shown here, I'm obtaining the stresses based on those two locations for each of those load cases. And for the response spectrum analysis, the stresses are always positive, and this is due to the combination rule. And we can say that this is the disadvantage of response spectrum analysis, it always provides positive results. And uh, please note that the positive results of stresses means that they have the same direction of local axis number 2. Then they are a tensile stresses. 
while the negative value of stresses correspond to the compressive stresses. For the dead loads as shown here for both locations we have got a negative value of stresses. This means that the stress applied at the bottom here is a compressive stress due to the self weight of the material. Also one of those two values are shown here or displayed here to be the minimum value of stress which is here at the zero coordinates. Okay. For the superimposed dead load and for those two locations we have those two values of stresses. And now let's go to the load combination of 0.9 dead load plus response spectrum analysis and based on the first option which is the maximum one which is this one here. Let me display it. We have obtained the maximum and minimum values of stresses on those two locations. The maximum result is located at the zero coordinates here while the minimum is located here at the middle. And as shown here, this value is computed basically by just summing the stress obtained from the first load case, which is the response spectrum analysis, plus 90% of the self weight plus the superimposed dead load. As shown here, we have got this computed value, which is just the same as the one displayed here. And similarly for the second value, we need just to do the same. Then basically what we are doing for the maximum option of the load combination, we are just using the positive values of the response spectrum analysis results. While if we select here the minimum option, which is here in ETAPS, We need to include the negative sign to the response spectrum analysis results plus 90% of the self weight and the superimposed dead load. Similarly for the second location here, we need just to do the same. We need to take the negative results of the response spectrum analysis stresses plus 90% of the self weight. Okay. Therefore, this is what ETAPS do for the, the option of maximum and minimum here that correspond to the load combination. For the maximum option, it takes all the response spectrum analysis results to be positive. While if we select the minimum option here, all the values of the response spectrum analysis will be in negative sign. And of course, since we are interested in obtaining the tensile stresses of the shear walls, we need to use the maximum option here. We don't need to use the minimum one as it corresponds to the compressive stresses, okay? Then we are just interested in obtaining the maximum results of this load combination. And before leaving this Excel sheet, I want to show you that I have already exported the results of the shell stresses for those two locations uh, from ETAP software as a values as shown here. And in order to do this, we need just to go to the display show tables and there is an option related to the walls output. We can use it. But in order to determine the correct uh, results, we need to determine the correct location by determining the unique name of the shell elements and the joints. For example, going to those two figures here, I have displayed the unique name of the shell elements using here this option, while I have used the unique name of the joints using this option, okay? And in order to determine the stress at the zero coordinates here, we need to use the shell element number two and the joint number one, okay? Similarly, for the middle uh, location, we need to use the shell 42 and the joint 58. And this is what I have did here in those two tables. Okay. Now we need to go to ETAPS to display the shell stresses for the walls. And I will use the 0 0.9 dead load plus one earthquake load to check the tensile stresses of the walls. In my previously uploaded video, I have used those two load combinations, which are the load combinations used to scale the reduced demand of response spectrum analysis method. But under real earthquake event, we cannot ignore the presence of the dead loads and the superimposed dead load. And that's why we need to use those instead of those, okay? But in practice, we can use all of those, okay? It's not a big problem. But I will use those because I want to use the same methodology used in my previous project, okay? And now we need to display the shell stresses of the walls. I will select the walls by going to the peer label here. And I will select the peer number one. And we need to display the shell stresses from this option. First, we need to choose the load combination in X direction. 
Of course, for this option, we need to use the maximum one and we need to select the Astro tool. And as shown here for the minimum and the maximum range, I have used the 3.5 megapascal, which is actually the modulus of rupture. Going to this Excel sheet, and for f prime c equal to 32 megapascal, the modulus of pressure is computed from this equation shown here, and it is equal to 3.5, okay? And by providing this value for those two inputs of the minimum and maximum ranges, we will be able to display the shell stresses results based on two colors only. For example, the first color will be for the stresses less than the 3.5, and the second color will be for the stresses higher than the 3.5, okay? Also, we can change the color displayed by going here to the output option. And we can change here, for example, the color of the maximum results from the dark blue to be yellow. And let's click apply here. But to save time, I have already exported the results to here to Excel. And as shown here, I have chosen to display the shell stresses of core number one and core number two only. And this is because both sides of this building act similarly due to the structural symmetry around the y-axis. Or in other words, if I put a mirror here at the middle, this side is just similar to this side. Therefore, we should expect to have the same response of those structural components under seismic forces applied in the y-direction. And as shown here, none of the shell stresses across all cores exceeds the modulus of rupture. And those small yellow dots aren't a big deal and they can be neglected. And keep in mind we should expect a high concentration of stress in certain spots like the wall corners and near opening, which is normal. But these minor stress points won't cause any major cracks or problems. So we can safely assume that the core walls aren't cracked and we can work with the uncracked section for this project, okay? But to provide further clarity, let me show you this example that I have included here for a similar project but with a different structural configuration. And this building is torsionally irregular under seismic forces applied in the Y direction. And as shown here, due to this irregularity, the tensile stresses of core number one exceeds the modulus of rupture and we have major cracking happening in the first two stories here. Therefore, we must classify the wall segments of core number one in the first two stories as a cracked section because they are experiencing a significant cracking as shown here. While core number two and the three doesn't experience this major cracking and those small yellow dots can be neglected. Therefore, this is how we can determine if the section should be considered as a crack or uncracked section, okay? And this is the end of this tutorial, I hope you find it useful and please stay tuned for my next video.